Next, Cambodia Surgical Ward, another of our top programs of the year as selected by viewers around the world. Now, it's the work of Dr. Jim Gologoli and his team in Phnom Penh, which has attracted the attention of viewers from all over the region. And here's an example, Dan in Hong Kong. Cambodia Surgical Ward is well worth seeing again. It's very inspiring. Dr. Gologoli and the staff at the Children's Surgical Center are doing amazing work for those in need. Okay, in the other set, there's a big, wide osteotome, a one and a half inch or something, in one of the sets. Could we get it out to the Oh, my God. This is getting, look like uh, the Atlanta railway station on Gone with the Wind. <laughs> Set up in the morning, and it looks like a mob scene and <laughs> something out of Gandhi, right? <laughs> and you think, how are we going to get through all this work? What, what on earth is going on? <laughs> and so it's, it's quite a deal. The daily rounds at the Children's Surgical Center in Phnom Penh. Is any better? Does he feel better now? But it's about a four-month-old baby, so she's... Uh... Its founder, Dr. Jim Gologly. In impoverished Cambodia, surgical treatment for most people is unattainable. Traveling from every part of the country, if they can reach this treatment center, they have a chance of an operation, a new start, a new life. It wasn't a normal injection. And on this side, she can bend her knee, but her kneecap, instead of being over here, is over here. There's a kneecap. And it should be sitting on here. Right? So In bed after bed, a challenging on. range of surgical cases. This is a nation still trying to rebuild a medical system, a generation after the murderous rule of the Khmer Rouge. She couldn't bend at all. She had it like that. She couldn't bend it. And that's a, obviously a big problem in a country like this where you squat to go up the toilet. Cases that often have gone untreated for months or even years. Good. So we're pretty happy with all this. We're doing uh, neglected disease, really, that nobody's really done it. Uh, and that's basically what you're going to see all around here. Yeah. Dr. Jim Gollagly, an Englishman with Irish oh, okay, roots, so boss, studied medicine at Trinity College Dublin and then began roaming the world. After Australia and South Africa, he came to the US, where he began a career as an orthopedic surgeon in Alaska. That's where he may still have been today, had it not been for the chance of a quick relief mission in Cambodia. A quick mission that has turned into almost a 20-year commitment. What happened was that um, I came here in 1992-93 uh, with the American Red Cross for six months and uh, really thought that this was the most destitute place I'd ever seen. And a couple of years later, some of the people who I'd met at that time asked me to come back and set up an organization for landmine victims who'd had the landmine in their hand when it went off. So the people putting it down or picking it up or sometimes just kids picking it up. So we came back in 1998 and started to do that. Uh, but I knew from my time before that there was a huge dearth of surgery and there are a lot of crippled kids around. and. Uh, so I came back with the idea that we'd start the program for landmine injuries, but we'd do whatever we could when we came along. And then as soon as we started, the polio kids came in and everybody came in, so we ended up really doing whatever showed up. On the operating table this afternoon, a young man, Nong Sakna. Like so many, he has a condition that has gone untreated for years, now requiring major surgery. What we're just going to do is a boy with some great big tumours on the back of his shoulder. They're uh, bony tumours and they interfere with the function of his shoulder and he looks terrible. So he wants us to take them off. The problem is they're very big and uh, the access to them is going to be difficult. And uh, so it's going to be a bit of a difficult operation. Uh, it's certainly not something that we do commonly, a big one like this. And, and he's got them on the scapula and on the back of his humerus. And, I'm anticipating a little bit of trouble. <laughs> you can't. You're going to get back the nerve. 
somehow, right? Yeah, I think that we're going to have to reflect it here. So I think the deltoid... In a country of such primitive medical resources, as news of the center has spread, it has found itself dealing with more and more complicated cases from people with nowhere else to go. To make, right? I mean, you know, basically the deal is here, you can't just wait for another specialist to come along, because you're the specialist, right? Um, it's a big problem, right? No, 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 it's a big problem, right? Okay, let's stop the bleeding as we go. All right, go on, going right down through the fat, right down to the muscle. Let's, yeah. We didn't have general anesthesia at first, right? So we had to start off with things that you could only do under local anesthesia, and then as we got more staff and we got more skilled, things started building, and then we've learned to do more and more. And so as time goes on, we're getting into a little bit of a problem that we're becoming a sort of tertiary referral center for Cambodia instead of doing the sort of uh, bread and butter stuff that, that we started off doing. Right. You're getting into uh, the bottom, that's teres minus and teres major. You don't, if you're gonna divide, no, 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 no. You should be really dividing this down here so that you can strip it forward if you need to. Right, but there it is. Assisting so in the operation, one of the Khmer surgeons employed at the center, Dr. Soom Rata. Right, okay, yeah. Well, there's a, there's a big nerve that comes out here that gets the big muscle, your deltoid muscle, that makes your deltoid muscle work. And if we cut that nerve, and the nerve's somewhere in this tumor, it's gotta be somewhere, uh, but the tumor's distorted everything so much that we don't know where it is. I mean, it's a challenge every year, right, to decide, are you doing the right thing? Should we do this patient? What should we do? And I think that it's a bit wearing. You need a break now and again. And, <laughs> and then you just got to wing it and have a go. The aim is for the local team eventually to become proficient in the kind of surgery Cambodia needs. So you're going to need an incise up here, right? Right, and then, yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, which muscle is it, number one? Which muscle is it? I think, look, we've got to start chiseling it off. Okay, give me that one, right. Okay, I'll start at this end, and then you can start at that end. Working from both directions with chisels, eventually the largest of the tumors comes free. Big swab, big swab, here. It's a boy. It's a boy, yes, <laughs> right over there. <laughs> This is, yeah, this is the tumors that came out of his back. There's bits and pieces as well. And the problem is, if this is a sarcoma, which I think there's a possibility that it is, and this is not good for him. Uh, now, give me, give me the, bone cut, the bone cutters and the bone biters. There are three tables in this one operating room, and, right? And can they all be working at the same time sometimes? And they, most of the time they are all working at the same time. It's just lunchtime now. <laughs> <laughs> what we've tried to do is keep this as a Khmer operation. So. We've got about 16 doctors on the staff, and, uh, and the idea would be that we, we are training them all the time to get better, do better surgery, be uh, more accurate diagnosticians, decide the right things, how to do it, and they provide the vast majority of the care. So if you could explain to him, right, so he can learn, that would be great. Yeah. Is that okay with you? Yes. You know, so if you could work with Dr. Rata, right, right yes. he speaks English, a little better than Dr. Moni, and he talks a bit more. So it'd be easier for you to learn, right? Yes. Okay, Rata? Yeah, all right. And then they get training either from me, who's here all the time, or the foreigners who come in and who visit, and they will give you two weeks of their time and effort and show you how to do some things, and then gradually the Khmer's learn to do it, and, and then it becomes available in Khmer society without the foreigners. Oh, it's been an extraordinary change here in Cambodia. Yes, absolutely extraordinary. I mean, the way that uh, when I came, there were no working traffic lights. Uh, uh, there were some white land cruisers belonging to the UN. And apart from that, a few little old Russian vehicles. And then everybody was walking or at the most had a bicycle. Just as Cambodia has developed, the medical services available here are undergoing dramatic change. Block. Okay, some, some, yeah. Okay, I could. Today, Golagli goes to a modern cardiology center to check on the progress of a young patient. Until a few years ago, such facilities were unheard of in a country whose medical system was shattered during the decades of civil war. When Golagli first arrived, the medicine he found being practiced came straight out of the history books. Right, but they have a center like this where they can do open heart operations and it looks as clean as it does and everything looks good. 
that's a real achievement right. here. You know, 1992, that was incomprehensible. I mean, the surgery uh, was sort of like about the time of the American Civil War, when you got your leg cut off if you had an open fracture of the tibia. That's what was happening here. But since that time, I mean, you know, it's now 16 years on, it's sort of moved forward to sort of time at more or less the end of the Second World War. From the Civil War to the Second World War, they've done in 10, 15 years what took about 100 years in America, right, as they moved on. Right. In rebuilding the system, expertise from overseas plays a vital role. Gologli is on his way back to the operating room, taking with him a visiting colleague from France. The case that awaits them is particularly harrowing, even by Cambodian standards. Miak Lam is a farm worker who's lucky to be alive. So, so today we have uh, here Dr. Philippe Michaud, Professor Philippe Michaud from the University of Toulouse, who uh, comes to Cambodia twice a year and he's a plastic surgeon, burn surgeon, so he's very experienced, so he has been helping us with this lady since we, we started. So this is a lady who's only 26, who two years ago had a fight with a, some sort of rice threshing machine, and she came off the worst. So she went to the hospital where they fixed up her arms and her legs, the wounds on her arms and legs, and did a little bit to her head, but the machine tore off all her hair and her scalp and she lost her right eye and so she's been in the village in this circumstance for about two years with no cover no skin on her head and she was seen there by an NGO who looked at her and said this lady looks terrible and called us up and asked us if we could do something so we said yes bring her in and let's have a look and we're gradually dressing these wounds of the head trying to feed her up so she'll heal something and then we'll do a skin graft. Now it may take us a week or two before we can do the skin graft and before we get this all off, but if we hadn't done that, she almost certainly would have died. Okay, just go slowly, guys. Start taking it off here. Eh? No, let, let. Right, because she was gradually getting weaker and weaker and losing fluid and protein from this. Blood and pus, yes I know. Okay, well, just go slowly, you know. What do you want us to do? What we're putting on is, is flamazine, which is uh, silver sulfur diazine. Okay. It sort of has an antibacterial ointment. No, let, let me just do this one. Okay. Very good, Suckling. I know it's hard work, right? I know it's hard work, right? Very good. Where do you want another one, Philippe? Yeah, yeah. It's All right. Down. Il faut coucher sur le ventre. Yeah, yeah. Okay. On va charger ça. Right. Okay. Stop, uh, Tom. Listen. Um, she's laying on her back too much, like that. Eh? Can you undo, Philippe? Two tick tick. Oh, good. Uh, now, a day after his operation, Nong Sakna is recovering well. He's getting used to life without the huge tumors on his shoulder with which he grew up. So, we did this guy yesterday and he's doing okay, he doesn't have very much pain as long as we don't move his shoulder. But I'm a little concerned still about the nerve function. He says he can feel, so that's good, but he doesn't feel the same as on the other side, so we may have stretched that nerve, whatever we did. We've got away without any major damage, and then we've removed his big tumors, and he's got some sensation, so it looks good. Right, right. Hearing about the center, normally by word of mouth, patients travel into Phnom Penh from all parts of Cambodia often with horrific conditions in search of a cure. Gologli is helped by his wife, Tanya Reyenbeck, a Thai accountant whom he married after starting up the center. Oh, well, uh, basically, Kanya's my wife. She came along, started working for us as a volunteer. I was the boss. I subsequently married her. It is the typical story, Rob. This is the guy that went into the government hospital and then pay as much as he could and then spend all the money. Uh -huh. And then right now, no money. The yeah, hospital doesn't want to yeah. keep them. So keep them out. You go, go wherever. Kanya has a particularly important job today, caring for 20-year-old Long Pros, about to undergo an operation to implant an artificial eye. <laughs> 